Salesforce practice at SaberPoint. So for those of you that don't know who SaberPoint is, SaberPoint is an IT consulting company that delivers a Salesforce solutions as well as digital transformation solutions. So um, I've actually been in the technology space for 12 years. I played many, many different roles from data analyst to developer um, to Salesforce admin, Salesforce BA, um, project manager. And um, I have uh, been in different type of industries, uh, enterprise, mid-market, um, as well as uh, startups. Um, I have, seven years ago, I have um, co-founded a woman in technology for Standard Poor's, the company. Um, you know, sadly, unfortunately, you know, even though um, that's seven years ago, we haven't actually made much of a headway for women in technology. Um, and I have been managing for 10 years, and I actually wanted to share some of the tips and tricks to kind of um, elevate women in their day-to-day um, -day roles. And I say, actually, I say 10 years actually only because I've been managing for um, actually 15 years, but for the first five years, um, I don't know what I was doing. You know, <laughs> I have no clue, and I probably, you know, made the wage, wage gap bigger. <laughs> Who knows? Probably. <laughs> so, season for 10 years, screwed up other people for five years, but <laughs> um, So, you know, I know there's a lot of different women tech um, statistics, and some people are new, so I just wanted to kind of um, lay down the foundation as to why this is actually a problem. Um, you know, right now we have 25% of computing jobs are held by women, right? There are more than 30% of women over the age of 35 still in junior positions. The turnover rate is more than twice as high for women than it is for men in tech, 41% to 17%. 56% of women in tech are leaving the employer's mid-career. And 5% of leadership positions in the tech sector are held by women. If you look at where you are today in your company, you should not be surprised at these statistics because you should all fall into these statistics. So I wanted to actually focus on three different topics today. One is, you know, how can we actually become an ally for women? How do we empower them on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, the second topic I want to talk about is, you know, how do we actually progress our, um, or further our career? You know, what are some of the tips? And the third one I really want to talk about, you know, how do we improve the quality of women in tech? So becoming an ally, I'm so glad there's so many men in the room. Because I think you know, this isn't actually gender specific. Um, this is more, um, you know, we, we just need help. You know? and, and men play a very, very big part in the role because you guys are 75%. Um, you know, and I think one of the things is um, it's really important to invest in the future. Not, not you know, to a certain extent, if you think about where we are, maybe you're in your 30s, maybe you're in your 40s, um, but the ones that really need help are the ones in their 20s, the ones in their teens, right? So um, everyone has someone that they look up to. Um, everyone looks up to somebody, you know? Um, and if you think about a 10-year-old, right? A 5-year-old would actually look up to the 10-year-old. So everyone has some level of influential power. Um, and maybe the 5-year-old is asking a 10-year-old to help them open a cap. You know, so be generous about, you know, what you know and about the time and giving knowledge back to these 20s and these teens because I see the movement so slow, it's probably not gonna, it's not gonna work. You know, like you, you, we might need a decade, we might need two decades. Um, the next one is uh, networking. Networking drives me a little bit crazy sometimes because everyone thinks they're gonna go to a networking event and find a job. It doesn't happen. Okay, you don't like go to a networking event and then expect like I'm gonna find my next employer, I'm gonna find my next business partner. Networking is really meant to you know find someone um, that you can relate to, someone you know that you um, can share stories with, you know you can make some friends, and then you know eventually you know over time that that networking effort, you know you will find a job. You know people will know you better, but you know to actually have that as the first step. You know, and your networking process is actually very stressful, right? So, you know, because and then if you actually see a woman in the corner, you know, we'll say hi to her and talk to her and, and kind of help her out because you know, it's it's not easy, especially for a young woman um, in, in uh, networking. You know, 
<laughs> so, um, amplification. Um, amplification is amplification actually speak up is some of the techniques that I I try to use in the workplace. Um, there are a lot of times where in the workplace when you are in a technology meeting, you have um, men and then you have women, and then I don't know if you guys noticed, but then when you have meetings, when women say something, it gets glossed over, and then ten minutes later. John said something that Joanna just said. <laughs> and then you're like, wait. So, but then all of a sudden John gets the credit because for some reason it's just glossed over, right? But you can, you know, help out the Joanna by saying, hey, you know, I actually think Joanna mentioned the same thing 10 minutes ago. You know, did she actually, you know, Joanna, do you, you know, you have anything else to say or, or things like that? Basically amplifying and giving her more voice by giving her a second chance. Um, and then speaking up, uh, I think this doesn't happen as much anymore, but there are definitely times when you're like in large organizations that um, there is inappropriate behavior, especially in the tech industry, because you know you have like uh, more senior staff or more senior consultants um, basically telling you know getting upset with a more junior person, um, and then they either get cursed out or whatever. But you know you basically have to kind of stop the meeting and just say, you know, you know, it's a little bit inappropriate to speak it offline. Um, because I think speaking up and not speaking up defines the culture of that company. So what you want to do is you want to make slow changes. Um, but you can't you can't change everybody. But I think those are some of the ways that you can um, become an ally for women. I mean right now I only have four things. I mean I'm sure we can do like twenty something things. Uh, but so far that's all I have for four. So um, the next one I want to talk about is how to progress further in your career. This one I've um, learned by experience. I've learned a lot. Sometimes I feel like I can't even talk about this openly to um, some of the companies that I work with. You know, and uh, one of them actually is the practice negotiation that I don't think I can talk to openly to people. But I mean, for the first one is connecting with mentors um, that actually relate to you. Don't just find somebody. And then like tag them as your mentor and hope that they'll do something for you, right? Um, find someone that will give you advice, that will give you guidance. Don't find someone that's constantly telling you how great you are, because you don't need to know how great you are. You want to know what's bad so you can actually improve yourself. Um, ask for feedback, you know. And then when you realize if you have the same mentor for three years and you feel like you haven't like changed or refocused, you know, maybe that's not for you. Maybe you just you need to find your mentor. Um, keep up with your technology knowledge and experience. I find too often that um, when a female gets, you know, when when you have a family, you are now like dedicated, a bit of the time dedicated to children. And then as you even get, you know, in, your kids get like, you know, maybe they're, they're six, they're seven, now you have elderly parents, right? So now you're taking care of the kids, you're taking care of the elderly parents, you take care of the household. So how do you juggle it all? You still need that job, right? And then, wait, and then I have to keep up with technology? I have to keep learning? I have to get any sales for certification? How many certifications do they come out with? You know? Um, so, it's, but it's really, really important. Even if it means that you have to, like, have a willpower to dedicate yourself one hour a night, you know, two hours a weekend. The reason why it's important is because you, you go to the gym, right? You have a longevity for your own body. That's why you go to a gym. You don't want to, you're not going to the gym for the sake of, like, like running, standing okay. in a treadmill for like an hour every day, right? So this is longevity for your career, longevity for your mind. Um, practice negotiation. So um, one of the reasons why I actually don't talk about this openly in other companies is because um, there is a lot of things that are happening in play. So let's just say I have um, um, John, right, and I have Joanne. This is, always happens to me all the time, every year, every half a year. So John comes to me and says, hey, Karen, um, you know, I've been doing really well, right? I said, yeah, you've been doing really well. It's great. And he goes, you know, um, I really like this company, and I would really love it if you would just give me that 5% increase, right? So I'm like, yeah, you know, let me, let me think about it. You know, let me see what I can do. And maybe, you know, you can actually put me up for promotion, you know? So 
Yeah. All right. Okay. So John's asking me for this, and Joanna never said anything. Very common in the personality of a man and woman, right? I am the manager. I'm not being biased, okay? But logically, psychologically, for myself, um, this guy is telling me that he might leave. I'm gonna think I'm, you know, he might leave, but at five percent. But she never said anything, so I assume that she might not leave, and she's already happy here, right? So what I, what, what do I end up doing? I potentially promote him, right? And then she gets mad. So that's what I've kind of learned in the first five years. You know, I did spread out the wage gap because I've been doing stuff like that, but that's actually very common. It's not me, it's not a gender thing. It's the, what is it called, the squeaky wheel? I don't know, something, someone gets something. It's a racket something, right? But, <laughs> but um, it's because, you know, you ask for it, so you get it. But, you know, I want to encourage women to please ask for promotion. Ask for your raise. Do it every six months. What's the worst that happens to you, right? You get no, or actually maybe you get a career roadmap, or maybe you get you know BS information, right? But the reality is, you now know the value of where you stand for that company. Um, but please ask because if you don't, you can't really complain about the wage gap because you caused it with the manager, right? So and definitely you know try to be um, uh, influential in the workplace. Uh, I think this one is a little bit more um, buzzword kind of recently, but influential in the workplace really means like driving the company's core values. How do you drive the company's core values? And making yourself kind of heard. Um, be proactive in giving. I know there are many times where you just want to stay in the zone, I'm just going to go to work, I stay in my zone, it's time to go, you know, I'm done. But unfortunately in the technology industry you can't really do that. Um, you are sometimes being asked to go to a meeting. You don't know why you're there, right? But when you actually do go to that meeting, just realize that you were there for a reason. Somebody thought that you knew more. And if you don't speak up, you might not be asked to go back again. Um, but you can actually um, help other managers. You can help other colleagues. I guarantee you, people will know and people will feel it. Maybe not like, you know, maybe they're not going to buy a Christmas present. But, you know, somewhere down the road, you know, you're going to actually um, get rewarded for, you know, being proactive and giving. Um, so the third, I wanted to actually focus on, like, improving the quality of women in tech. And to be honest, like, all these things I'm talking about is a struggle for me every day. You know, I have to remember that this is what I need to do every single day. Um, and for raising awareness, um, I actually want to tell you guys a story. So my grandmother immigrated here when, uh, 60 years ago, right? She uh, founded a Chinese <coughs> Women's Benevolent Association in New York City, Chinatown. Wow. wow. And then um, I was too young. I didn't really know her involvement. I didn't know what she did. <coughs> All I know is that annually, International Women's Day, we go out to dinner. The whole family goes out to dinner, and she hosted an event. I never know what she did. I just know she's never home, right? And then I would ask my parents, like, what does she do? And then they said, she doesn't do anything. She just goes out. And so I'm like, grandma doesn't do anything, you know? But actually, she spent 30 years of her life doing that, you know, raising awareness. And um, I mean, she's, she's no longer, I, I have no idea what her problem is. But I know that when um, she passed away and I had to clean up her house, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm probably retarded or something. But there's like these pictures on the wall that's always been there, you know, and she had a frame with her and, and Giuliani, you know, and she had pictures of her and like the police commissioner. And she, um, she was holding up a plaque within these pictures and it basically says Chinese Benevolent Women's Association charity, right? So then, like, I would go back to my mom, and, you know, she passed away now, right? So I'd go back to my mom and say, Mom, what, what did Grandma really do? Just spend money, never come home. And I was like, charity? Uh. And then, so, like, in, like just, just, like, how progressive my grandmother was and how unaccepted she is in the family because of what she chose to do 
Um, and you know, we haven't really progressed that far, but I think raising the awareness is actually you know, really important. Um, consider women in succession planning. This one, I never got the opportunity to do it because I've never had this. I would love to. I would love to have someone that would work for me and I say, you know, I would want you to take over my role. But unfortunately, because there's so many women dropping out in the industry, um, it's hard to keep someone in. Um, and even when you know I try to keep them in, they stay at a junior level because they feel like there's so many obstacles. Work-life balance, remote, um, they just feel like other people aren't treating them correctly. So there's just a lot of obstacles. Um, but hopefully one day I can, I can do multiple succession planning for women. Um, educate schools about tech. I mean, this one is you know really something I, I really care about. Um, I uh, went to a couple of in, in you know a couple of years ago I went to Catholic schools and basically taught them how to build a website. They're not very focused. You know they don't really want me to be there, but I don't care. You know I teach them anyways. So it was only probably two people that actually learned out of the twenty. Um, <laughs> but um, you kind of keep doing it and then they'll, they'll resonate with them. Um, but then if you look at the kids today, it's like, what's the difference between the, the girl and the boy? They both watch YouTube videos. <laughs> they both play Minecraft, you know? They both play games, there's no difference, you know? But it is gonna be their future and they have to know that there is no gender bias or there shouldn't be gender bias. Um, and I think the, the other thing is um, understanding the challenges for women. It's real, right? Work-life balance is real. Um, gender wage gap is real. Um, and just accept it. It's okay, right? It's a challenge that women face, but it's not something that's like something that we we can basically say, oh, just go away, just go away, you know. But just be accepting of it, you know. Like for me, um, work-life balance, I feel like it's more of a choice, right? You can decide what's your work-life balance. You can decide, like, hey, you know, after five o'clock, I don't want to work anymore. I just want to take care of my kid, have dinner. And that's fine, right? But some other people's work-life balance is like, it's different, you know? They might want to get back on at 9 o'clock at night. They might want to study and they might want to do different things. But um, I know work-life balance has always been a hot topic, but it's definitely a choice that we have to make and we shouldn't, because of we, us choosing that choice, you shouldn't feel like you need to take a pay cut. You shouldn't feel like that you need to not ask for a promotion because of it. Um, and then keeping a fair gender mindset. I think what I've always tried to do is, um, in, in all of these women tech forums, I try not to gravitate too much towards um, the female gender. Only because, you know, the, the male gender actually holds the most power. No, it's just kidding. Um, <laughs> but um, it's actually because uh, um, they are a very big part of the technology industry. We need them to help um, be an ally to women to help elevate the woman, right? I mean, to, to kind of have a woman in tech conference without the male is kind of, to me, it's always like very strange, right? You go to a women in tech conference and then you want to make a difference, but then 75% of the people that need to make a difference is actually not here. Mm -hmm. So I would love it if, you know, over time we can bring more, draw in more men to kind of help solve this problem um, because it is a problem that actually needs to be solved. Um, and then mentorship, I don't know. I guess, you know, like I said it before, it's really important just, you know, focus your, uh, some of your time if you have um, left and all of the days that you do everything, <laughs> you know, to, to mentor the future. If anything, you know, mentor your kids. You know, that'd be really good. Um, that's it, that's all I have. What, what do you want to do in a year? 
what do you aspire to do? So then when I can grab that information out of them, then I know they want to stay. And then because they want to stay, I have to go do something proactively. But what's hard is that like managers don't do that. It's not normal. So that's why now I have to tell people to speak up to to ask for it. So um, in one of my previous positions, I did ask my manager for an increase of pay. And I told him that it's not a matter of um, a difference in gender. I said it's more that like my expertise is not any different than the person next to me. So why do I have a uh, a wage gap, you know? But in actuality, no one's doing it on purpose. It just happens, you know? So there was a, uh, I remember, there was an interview with Mark Benioff. You know how he leveled all of the female pay, right? Mm -hmm. Two years later, he was on an interview, again, after after he leveled off, he, and then he went to the, the head of HR and he said, we just literally spent millions and millions of dollars, like resetting everybody's pay. What happened? Why did two years later we still have a pay, you know, wage gap? He said, well, it's actually because we buy up these companies and all of these companies all have a wage gap. Mm -hmm. And then we subsequently need to recalibrate every single time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's I think you know, it's something that we just, as, a, as female, I know it's not natural, but we have to keep doing that in order for us to get you know, fairly represented. To kind of piggyback off that question, I didn't mind. I'm wondering, because I feel like it's just across the board um, in the workplace, just to, like we're talking about um, salaries in general, do you see that in a role with a male or female? I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? I was saying, I, I, I have this impression that in the workspace, I don't think it's an impression I've experienced it. Um, it's just to, to start talking and having conversations about salary, um, whether male or female, just with a, a co-worker. Do you see that play a role in, in um, the... Yeah, actually I've heard that, that I mean, I haven't, I haven't done it, but I, I've heard that more people are talking about the salaries now. <laughs> I haven't actually dis I haven't actually known if it's a, um, a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, it's definitely a bad thing for the manager, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but in many companies, you are not allowed to talk yeah. about salaries. It's a private information, and yes. you just yeah. cannot discuss it. Here you're discussing even your own salary, they're still thinking that you're disclosing a private information, even though it's more private information, they're not allowed. Yeah, it was in my alma letter, I just kind of know how to hear from a lot of states, like I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and the company cannot penalize you for talking about yeah. it. Transparency is growing. Yeah. Chicago yeah. is a different Oh, I know it's place. different, but like yeah. check New York law. Like, I think yeah. com That's state state right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 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 But you you won't know. It's like the, the reason why I the reason why I know is because I am a manager, so I see like other people's wages. But no one would actually tell you like how much they make, um, unless they feel like they're like that disparate, you know, between the next person. Um, but if you actually are the person that's actually making more, you're probably not going to disclose it, you know. So especially when you're in like large financial organizations, large pharma organizations. You can't disclose that information because you're going to cause such an uproar. You know, so it cause so much drama. It's you know just unnecessary. So if I if I may just touch upon that subject where they say it's a state law driven, and at Salesforce it is more of a cultural, more of a tech driven space where equality is a high demand. It is voiced by almost every single employee. It is heard by throughout the whole entire chain of leadership. How do you see that changing here within New York? And do you see, you know, what's the right approach as a manager, as a leader in this space? Yeah, I think for me, I actually didn't know it has anything to do with law. Well, I didn't know it was that. Oh. Actually, it's an HR law. They're not allowed to ask you. Yeah, the company when you're getting hired. When you go it's for the HR, HR they're, not, like they're, HR they're HR. not allowed to ask you that's, how much did you make at your last that's job. That's different. That, yeah. well, that's, no, New that's, different. Yeah. that's New York yes, State. Yeah. And that's different from being able to share. Oh, I made true, yeah. this amount. Oh, how much do you make? That's, that's different. That's you know, personal. Yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I do realize that the, the sharing of information actually does help. When a male yeah. shares their salary, it's extremely helpful because you kind of know where you kind of fall into. And some of the disparate, like some of the disparate numbers are very large, to be honest. Um, and I think in the, in the tech industry, 
I see people sharing stuff all, I see people sharing salaries all the time. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're actually yeah. coming up on the, the the week that they say that women earn seventy eight percent of male salaries. So I think it's the third week in October that is equivalent to women stop earning and men continue earning from the end of the year. It's actually the yeah. third week, so it's very appropriate that this meeting is held. Yeah. Speak. Uh, because That's that is we're coming up oh, on the point where yeah. women stop getting paid yeah. and men continue to get paid for the same exact job. Yeah. Through the so it is October, so companies will come around with their reviews, right? Uh -huh. They probably just have it in September. Um, you know, and then you're going to get your bonus or you're going to get in December, January. Not that right <coughs> now, they can get it into paper. I'm just saying. Absolutely. What I really got from your message, which I really appreciated, is that you kind of have like a very pragmatic approach to it. Like, okay, you know, like it happens, it's existing. So instead of like putting your energies towards like resenting it, it's like accept it and then do something. Yeah. You know, exactly. which is such a positive message as opposed to being angry and resentful. You're just like, okay, this is the way it is. Now I'm going to go and do something about it. Yeah. Which is so positive because then you just, you, you take that energy and just and you're turning it into something positive and you're work, making it work for yourself. And I think, you know, that was a really good message. Thanks. Can I ask you one question? In regard to your philosophy and empowering more women and encouraging more women, have you made a difference in your company? Have you been hiring new women in your integration space, right, to enable all that? I'm trying. I mean, to be honest, it's not easy. Um, majority of the resumes that come in, 75% are men, you know? And the ones that are female, um, it's it's different, you know? It depends what you're looking for. Um, so I am keeping it very conscious, but at the same time, um, I don't want to be overly biased to the point that, you know, I'm not fulfilling the role that I need, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just speaking to the, when we talk about, like, I love you, I'm gonna bring it to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like, a male, female, just valuing, um, knowing what their work is, like, how do you address that? I, I noticed you started mentioning um, that you kind of pull it out of a female that doesn't speak up and doesn't ask for emotion. How do you recognize someone that actually values themselves, or how would you actually coach? A female that doesn't realize the value of the work that she's doing, and I know sometimes it's hard because when you look at someone gets into a junior level position, how do they even know when it's actually time to step out of that role and become the next senior person? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I have to be very, very careful because I'm a manager of that company, right? I can't just go around telling. That's why I say when, when I talk about practice negotiation, I can't really share that information internal to where I work. Um, I have to be very careful about that information. Um, and uh, it's hard, but to be honest, um, the people that I help are the people outside of my organization because that, that medium is much, that channel is much easier for me. When I'm inside, I don't know. I don't know who to trust, right? Um, so I have to be very politically careful myself to just make sure that I'm not you know, putting myself in a ditch because right. I decided to really feel like I want to mentor someone and then someone turns around and goes, Wait, she just told me to ask him for a raise, <laughs> you know? Um, so I have to be careful. Question, so what's missing from the resume you said you're trying to promote women, but there are only 25% of the resume, so what's missing that enables you, you know, that says like, I can't yeah. really like so these what, people? Yeah, so what's happened is like, um, I think it's more of a, a quantity thing. So if you have like four resumes, let's just say, and three of them always comes in as now, there's just a lot of um, different uh, skill sets, right? And then when the female one comes in, because either just because she's, she's female, but then it'll be like maybe just VA. I only see VA, right? Or just admin. So I don't have that much choice. I either, and it's almost like a timing thing, I feel like. If that one came in at the right time, at the right, I gravitate myself towards like, you know, three or four people, and I'm like pushing them. Sally knows. Take your certification, take your certification. And I'm just harassing them, right? Take your certification, I'll teach you, I'll train you. Just take it, my God. What's the worst that happened? You fail, you go back again, right? But I think in their mind, they're much more um, 
they think they can do more. In actuality, they haven't put in the time to do what they wanted to do in their mind. So even though I'm pushing them, they can only move so fast, you know. Um, so that's even hard, right? Because they are they are actually coming to the Salesforce um, meetups, and they do want to change, but they haven't made the leap forward yet, even when someone pushing them. Keep on playing, Karen. Um, what? Obviously, there's a few recruiters in the room. Yes. Um, you are here. Um, oh, I'm hiring. That was it. So, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> See you later. Have a, have a good one. Um, what what role can recruiters play in um, not only educating clients um, but also influencing shortlists, perhaps to make sure there is more diversity on the shortlist, be it females or be it uh, ethnic minorities, or you know how can any advice for us in the room, how we can speak up on people's behalfs to make sure that the shortlist isn't just, no offense, but not that the, the shortlist isn't four white males yeah. in their 50s, you know, so how, any advice for yeah, us in the room? Yeah, I do think like the recruitment firms has a lot of power, right? You can always just put a plug in and say, oh, you know, what about, you know, are you interested in, you know, maybe um, someone out of college, right? You don't have to be very gender specific. But then you can say, you know, are you interested in someone that's one year in? Because a lot of times, the female is actually the one in the more junior position, right? And you can basically kind of leverage that type of situation and see if there's an appetite for a change in the role versus what they actually have given you. I know it's hard, right? Because mm -hmm. it might seem like you don't know what they're asking for. Um, but uh, I don't know because I'm not actually in your space. So I don't know how hard it is. I don't know if that's even possible. Um, but that's what I would, I would do, try to you know, change you know, how, how they think about that particular role. I am um, a potential solution. Um, it's a client I was working with in, I think it's the accident from the UK, it's a client I worked with uh, in Manchester. They actually insisted that we sent resumes uh, with no names on. Um, yeah. So you're purely judging somebody based on skill set, clients they've worked with. Uh, no names, no like where they where they did their university like degrees from, whether it was the UK or you know overseas or whatever it was. So, so the only oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Sorry, how was the program? The program was good. They were an author uh, called DWF, um, and actually, like, there's four people with them, three of them will win. Wow. <laughs> what were you gonna say? A challenge? Yeah, no. Interesting. Right, on that point, because right, I think actually that's that's great. We're right? taking a convenient way. From you know, you're talking about community before about you know being an ally, you know, to women yeah. in tech, and there is obviously a history where you know it's been male dominant, and then you know that really does need to change. So, do you think there's an you know an area of where it should all be just treated in terms of skill set, or is actually you know do we have a responsibility to try and speed up quality in the tech space? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm like to be honest, I'm a little disheartened by how long it's been taking and and what hasn't happened so far because I think there are a lot of women in tech movements and um, I would much rather you know us have moved it further but I do realize that the generation that's younger than me have actually um, have a different mindset and I think maybe what we can do is start with that right have a have a different mindset I mean to be honest like working with the the Saber point team when I went in there there's like like when I went in there and started working for them I was like, there's no way they don't have any bias. Everybody has bias. Are you kidding me? You know, especially on the tech side, right? Um, but they truly have no bias. I, I, you know, I don't know how that happened, but they literally had zero bias between a female and a, and a male. But they, I guess they, you know, culturally, they've always been like that. So, you know, is it possible to kind of harness that level of culture and, you know, move it to um, mid-market, kind of companies or, or enterprise companies. Um, I think it, it's definitely hard. I mean, what I do is, don't tell my clients, but what I do is um, when I do have clients, I um, mentally pick out the female in the, in the room. And uh, because of my, my clients are, you know, a lot of my clients are um, uh, on the older established side of the company. 
so there's a lot more men. But then when I pick out the women in the room, um, I basically try to work with them to make sure that you know they do understand the requirement, they do understand what we're trying to build for them. And you know, uh, you know, I, I can only play so many roles in so many parts, but um, just being in this industry um, and being in the consulting world is a lot harder, I think, than being in a, in a as an employee sometimes, because you're constantly moving. So how can you help in a day-to-day -day type of environment? I think you, you could view that as an opportunity to reach even a broader audience because you're not just limited to one company. You have the opportunity to impact a multitude of companies with your attitude yeah. and your mindset uh, and the way you operate. Sure. Yeah. Hey, Karen, can you speak to a little bit more of um, when you were mentioning the strategies when you So um, in the technology space, whether you know it or not, you either save money or you spend money, okay? Um, you have the power to um, cut back on some vendor usage, right? Whether that means you are buying extra licenses, whether that means, you know, in Salesforce, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about Salesforce speak, right? So what I did for a couple of companies is I helped them right size their Salesforce system. So let's just say they bought 300 licenses, they have 50 sitting there. And that 50 sitting there is extremely expensive every month, right? So when you find ways, and the technology is very easy, when you find ways to help save that 50, and basically say, oh, you know, um, I'm just gonna write a script, and I'm just gonna deactivate people that don't log in every two weeks. I'm just gonna recycle these licenses. And then the annual renewal comes up. Just don't buy those, you know? Cut out 20. And then all of a sudden, you can actually calculate, right? Because, you know, it's pretty obvious how much the licenses cost. And you can calculate how much money you save the company. And then in turn, you try to push that back onto yourself, you know? But you should, at the, at the very least, you should know and have some level of self awareness of how important you are to that company. If you are just a dime a dozen, then it's going to be hard, you know? But if you do know that you have value, like, just think about if I left, what would happen? If the answer is nothing, then you have no leverage. Um, if the answer is like, well, I don't know, they're gonna find someone to replace me, they're gonna scramble, then you know you have leverage. It doesn't matter if you're six months in, one year in, you have leverage. And you kind of want to get to that position every single time, right? So um, you don't want to be one out of like a 10. You want to be the shining star at every, every moment of Karen, can I ask you a question in regard to your client base that you say the traditionally older yeah. and the traditionally male? Let's say hypothetically fast forward, you do have a pool of very talented female workers working in a, a surplus of them. How do you actually propel and create that space for your clients? Because the clients with the traditional male, the traditional folks, they would usually want a male dominant figure. They want a more well-spoken yeah. English user, right? Because that's a big challenge in tech. Tech yes. is about, I great, you have all these tech guys, but they can't speak to me, they can't relate to me. Yeah. I can't work with them. Yeah, it's funny. How do you, um, as a leader, bridge that gap? I had that concern myself before I joined Saber Point. I asked myself, can I actually take on this role? Mm -hmm. And it has more to do with like my, my background. It has more to do with being a female, being Asian, um, would the client listen to me, you know? And same point's like, yeah, 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 they'll listen to you, you know? And I'm like, okay, like, yeah, like, are you sure, you know? And then I realize um, they actually have it down packed, you know? It's, it actually doesn't matter, I realize, you know, and this is what I've learned being with them. It doesn't matter because as long as you have a male ally, you are fine. And um, in Saber Point, like, we work as a, as a team. So if it's like a, a particular pitch or a particular deal, um, we work as a team. And then the male are actually all out. They'll cover for you. Um, so that's the part, like, 
you're right. You will lose your voice if you're running alone. So you can't really want to run alone in a consulting role. Thank you. Okay, Jane.